NFL coaching carousel, it's that time where, you know, people are looking for coaches. People are, you know, interviewing, trying to hire coaches. And, of course, before we got on air, we actually found out about a no another coaching hire in the NFL. The Titans have their new head coach, and it is uh, Brian Callahan. Not Brian Callahan, Brian Callahan's son. Oh, no, Brian Callahan. It's yeah, Brian Callahan. Bill Callahan's son. Yeah. All the Bs, right? Brian Callahan, who was the offensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow and them, as I like to call them. Um, not the play caller, though, right? Like, Zach Taylor mm -hmm. handled play calling. But offensive coordinator, nonetheless, uh, gets a chance to run his own shop with the Tennessee Titans. What, what's your re reaction to that one? Uh, it, it, it definitely feels out of left field. I mean, we were cross-talking when the G-bag, when it happened. I was just like, I, I mean, I didn't even hear much rumors about this. This kind of just kind of came out of nowhere. Like, all right, here's a new head coach. And it it's very interesting that they fired, they fired Vrabel for this. They're obviously trying to get younger trying to get a different scheme in there. So it'll be interesting to see what it brings. But I'm more I'm more worried about what connections he has. Maybe he brings a T. Higgins along with him, who's a free agent upcoming this season. So I think the identity will change in, um, in Tennessee. I don't think they're going to be the same ground and pound, hard-nosed, tough defense that Vrabel was uh, kind of – that was kind of his identity. I think this might be a more pass-friendly offense like we saw in Cincinnati. So I'll be interested to see how this team goes – through the months and years of this new head coaching hire with Rabel gone. Yeah, man, it's very clear that the Titans wanted to change, like, the identity of what they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, even though when they fired Rabel, like like you, I was kind of surprised because it felt like whatever they gave him, he maximized that roster. But it, ve it was very evident, like, the, the upside on, of it was going to be low. It was going to be a low ceiling proposition, even if he was maximizing what was happening. It's clear that they're going into a position of, like, rebuilding in a way, right? They're going to see if they can try and build this thing up. I'm interested to see what exactly Brian Callahan's vision for this hey, is. The worst thing you can do is, in, and we've, we've debated this back and forth, but in my opinion, at least in the NFL, is be in the middle. You either want to be contending, making the playoffs consistently, or you want to be bad enough to get draft picks and have cap space. You don't want to just be, and I feel like Tennessee was one of those teams that was always like seven wins, eight wins, seven wins, second in the division, third in the division, never really, really contending, but never really the worst team in the division year in after year out. So they're trying to, you know, maybe sink a little bit to, to rise, or maybe they think they have the pieces, they can get the pieces in the offseason to be a team that's contending, but they've obviously trying to change that identity. Some other, like, head coaching or, I guess, front office things, uh, the, the Panthers hired Dan Morgan, who uh, as their president of football operations and general manager. This one I thought was interesting. The Bears are working, basically, you know, negotiating to hire Shane Waldron as their new mm. office coordinator, former office coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, with Pete Carroll stepping away in that situation, all those assistants end up in kind of in limbo. He going for the Chicago Bears. Like, how interested are you in that uh, kind of pairing, considering? the lack of support that Justin Fields has had in Chicago. Yeah, hopefully hopefully they can get it they can get right the ship over there cuz it's it's an interesting place. Um a lot of lot of stuff has passed away, a lot of stuff has died over there in that kind of land, so he's going to need to do a lot of resurrection. Hopefully hopefully he got his good juju on his side. Ho hopefully he knows what he's doing over there because if not um you're going to be another scapegoat situation and we're going to have another firing. <laughs> Yeah, like, I think that that one's kind of interesting in, a, in almost a Cowboy similarity way because mm -hmm. Matt Eberflus, I feel like he's he's on the hot seat in a way. Yeah, it's in weird. Chicago. He and, was going up and down and up and down. <laughs> and so, like, they get rid of Luke Getze. You had to. That offense was not well, it was not inspired. Nope. And it did not give your quarterback the best chances to, of success. In fact, the things that you look around and you go, these are the things that are probably the elements that you need to be successful with Justin Fields. It felt like they did not do mm -hmm. enough. Shane Waldron comes in with a wealth of experience and working, you know, working in Seattle. And I, I think that he's a good offense coordinator, but that's a circumstance where you come, you're going to, you know, come into a spot where, even if you do well, if if the overall result isn't good enough, you might be out of a job still because they might get rid of your boss, who is Matt Eberflus. And that is the circumstance the Cowboys would find themselves in should Dan Quinn get a job, yep. or should for some reason the Cowboys in their you know in their um their you know figurings out of where they want to go forward, should mm -hmm. they not invite Dan Quinn back? Now, of course, we have the reporting that he would likely be back if he was not made a head coach. But I'm interested how the fan base feels about Dan Quinn and whether, you know, how excited they are for his return should he not be made a head coach because 
Dan Quinn for a good amount of time, for the first couple of years that he was here, entirely unassailable. In fact, first two and a half years, entirely unassailable, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the defense showed so many signs of leakage yep. towards the back end of this year. And also, I think the ways in which they were completely dismantled in the playoff game, not that one single game would, you know, be the end-all, be-all. However, also, you can you pair that with Dan Quinn's record against the Shanahan tree yep. offenses. Mm -hmm. Being 0-6 and, and and not just like the win-loss, but like clearly him having having trouble handling and trying to re rein those in when those are the those are the offenses that seem to be running the league and seem to be um the gatekeepers to success for you. How excited are you about the prospect of him returning should he, you know, not get one of these head coaching jobs this time around? So it, it it's kind of a weird spot because I, I think you hit a I think you hit a good nail on it. it it's not just a Packers game that I'm knee jerk. Oh my gosh, can't have him back. I long term do not want Dan Quinn back because of what you just said. Mm. That Shanahan tree is what you have to be to be good in this in this league. All the best coaches, for the most part, outside of like Andy Reid, are somehow part of that Shanahan tree. And it's funny because Dan Quinn in Atlanta was with most of those guys. Yep. And you would think that he would be, okay, I know their tendencies. Nope. They hit him like he has never seen it before. That and might go the other way, though. That might be those no, guys no dance knowing can, some, of, some of the dance. Although, and, Dan's defense, like, there is something to be said for. Like, this, he has, you know, evolved his defense. This is clearly not the Legion of Boom defense yes. that you saw in Seattle. So, like, I think one thing that gives me a little bit of hope should he return is he has in the past shown an ability to evolve. Now, if he is given the right um, the right amount of talent or, like, amount of talent is not the right thing. You had a lot of pro bowlers on this roster, and, of course, you still are going to have Trayvon Diggs back. But what I'm saying is if he's given the talent uh, that fits, right, one of the things we talked about is the idea of not being able to go big, mm -hmm. even in some circumstances. I, I'm interested in seeing if he would be able to, you know, evolve in a, such a way that would allow him to better handle those And, and I, I think this season will be good because, in my opinion, I'll just be, I'll just be frank, the season kind of feels like a little bit of a wash coming up with bringing back Mike with none of the probably major offensive pieces changing. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know what? Bring back, if he doesn't get a head coaching spot, bring him back in whatever for a year. And maybe, maybe we're all crazy and it was just a personnel. You give them some big linebackers and they're a top five defense. I don't know. And at times they were, but I'm not looking at, well, they did good last year. I saw some people texting that. Well, they did good against this certain quarterback. To be the defensive quarter of the Cowboys, the, the standards are higher. I don't want you to be good in spots. I want, Look at Mike McDonald. Like, the, there's ne very few and far between games you can say the Ravens' defense weren't physical and didn't play well and were in the wrong spots. There is a lot of times that it did not feel like just a personnel issue where guys were in the wrong spots. That Green Bay game, I'm not like, well, if they just had this player in this spot, they would have been a lot closer of a game. They didn't look like they wanted to play football that day. And that, I already gave most of the, the blame to Mike McCarthy. But Dan Quinn plays a part in that as well. He coaches the defense. I mean, we got Micah Parsons not rushing the passer on third down, standing guarding grass, standing there picking daisies because that's what he was told to do on that play while Jordan Love sits in the backfield, calls his mama, and throws a dart down the field. So there, there's some places where the Buffalo game, they're running all over you. Yes, would it help to have heavier linebackers? Of course. But at some point, you got to change and stop going nickel and dime. I, I I haven't seen quick adjustments. How many times have has a first half we've been dominated this past year, and in the second half, Dan Quinn comes out with a new adjustment, and all of a sudden the the defense looks better. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it where the defense comes out looking different than they did in the second half. And I get the personnel thing, and I full heartedly agree with it. We lost our linebackers. You want to have beefier players? You had safeties playing linebacker. I get it. They're not the only team in the NFL that had injuries. They are not the only team in the NFL that had injuries. Look at the Bills. They Half of their defensive team was decimated, and they still kept that Chiefs game close. I don't think the defense is the reason they lost the game. So at some point, at some point, we got to stop making excuses for Dan Quinn. I'm not saying he's a bottom five coordinator, but I just don't think he's up to the standard of what Cowboys fans, what Cowboys players want for their team. But for a year, he's cool. But if he gets a head coaching job, I wouldn't be crying. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that – like I mentioned, I, I think that there's a, there's an ability to evolve or there's a, a possibility of evolution. But one thing that you can say is that the Cowboys M.O. going into this postseason, I think the thing that one of the things that showed up in the loss versus the Packers is the mentality that we, we are going to do what we do 
and we're not going to have any level of a level like adjustment or whatever even though i understand right they came out they played a lot of zone right but mm -hmm. that, the idea that this is who we are and this is how we're going to play and ha i think that you need to be a little bit more multiple right mm -hmm. and obviously a lot of this is in also an indictment of the front office and just like the way that your personnel was because of injuries and various other things, right? Like mm -hmm. there's a lot of factors that play in here. Um, but the ways in which a team was able to look at what you were doing and know exactly what your your personnel or what your rules were and exploit it was concerning. Um, I'm interested, though, if some people are just in the place where it's like that would be a place where you could change, where you could find some level of change, mm -hmm. right? You You have, you're basically running it back. In all facets, <laughs> it's not that crazy, back, Reggie. Right, and I look. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, people that are upset for good reason when it comes to these cowboys. And I was wondering if there was just some people that were like, just for the sake of something different, right? Um, that change could. Have, and again, your hand might be forced in this regard. Yeah. Uh, but I was just intrigued to see if that would be something that people and how people still feel about Dan Quinn because in that locker room they love him. Yep. Uh, in that in that organization they love him. Yep. And he's a well-respected defensive yeah. uh, coordinator. And, and and us in the media, us in the fans, we can think whatever we want to make. What really matters is what Reggie just said. As long as the players love him, they buy in, who cares? We can call him the worst coordinator or the best coordinator. That doesn't affect how he plays and calls football games. I don't, I don't really care. I'm just telling you what we feel that he is doing. And... We, I think we, we, we get misconstrued over looking at past results. Well, the Cowboys, seven years ago, the defense wasn't good, and now that Dan Quinn showed up, it's looked different. I agree. The defense has looked better. So has the personnel. So has the offense. Those both play a part. You can't just attribute, well, Dan Quinn made the defense look good, so he can do no wrong. I think that's the part that we get confused. Once somebody does something well, they can do no wrong. It doesn't matter if they fall apart. Well, remember what they did last year? That's like that's like your girl or the girl you're with. She she does you right. She buys you roses every Valentine's Day, takes you out to dinner, but then she cheats on you. It's like, well, remember what she did back then? She did do me better than anyone else has done me. That doesn't mean what she's doing right now is right. So we gotta we gotta not misconstrue and pull them together that just because he did something in the past means that in the future he can do no wrong. Cause I don't think Dan Quinn is up to the standard of what they want long term. There's a reason that we're having these discussions. I don't think he proved himself. And we can look at the regular season all we want. Really don't care. I really don't. What is my defensive coordinator going to do against the best offensive coordinators, a.k.a. the Shanahan tree, which he's 0-6 against, in the playoffs, in those high-leverage moments, against the Bills, against the Dolphins, against the, the Chiefs, against these good football teams, I feel like he, at most times, doesn't play up the standard. Yeah, and look, I think we there's there's instances where you know a coordinator is going to scheme scheme your team into a interesting circumstance, and I'm... I'm not sure that I'm there with Dan Quinn, but I also still would be okay, very much okay with him returning. Um, mm -hmm. But that is something that I'm starting to have questions about. And so it'll be interesting to see. Ultimately, again, this might not even be an issue, right? He has been a head coaching candidate for two, three cycles at this point, yep. And it feels like this one is heated up to even an even higher level. But that Packers game in particular, but also not just the Packers game, right? Like this season, in addition to putting up some of the best performances for defense, You've seen them put up some of the worst performances That's the weird for defense. Part. So high, so yeah. low. And I think that high variance has given me a level of pause. And so I'm interested. I'm I'm just very intrigued to see what the back end of this is. But I do have a level of belief in Dan Quinn. And I think if you were to have a level of belief in any of uh, any of the coaching coaching on the coaching staff, he's one of those guys that reasonably you should and, have some in. And we and we talked about this too with Mike McCarthy returning for one year. They've already publicly said they're not going to give him an extension. It's very hard to fill someone to fill that defensive coordinator yep. role because if you don't know these these positions, you're trying to go up and up. DQ to OC to to head coach to whatever. You're not trying to go down or stay at the same level. So when you have just a year left role, a lot of these coaches bring their their boys with them. They don't just come usually as one. They usually bring in the passing game coordinator, the special teams, or the tight ends coach. They're bringing their boys so they got their personnel. So it makes sense when they're making their calls down down the road. Bringing in a, a defensive coordinator in this high leverage situation where you know the expectations are high and you're filling in for maybe a year and you're either guaranteed the head coaching spot or not guaranteed the head coaching spot, it's a very hard sell. So it'll be hard to get a quality guy that would do better than Dan Quinn. So that's why I said for this year, I'm fine with running it back. But if they did not, I would not be like, man, this defense is just going to fall apart. What are we going to do without Dan Quinn? They'll figure it out and they always have.